first convention you attended? Uh, the first convention I remember attending was in Toronto. It was the Hobby Star Expo. It was called something different back then. Uh, I think it was like the National Canadian Expo. Right. Yeah. And then they found out they can't call that because they're an American company running that. Oh, um, AMA Expo, yeah. So, yeah, that was my first one. And they had some anime content there, but it was mostly for North American comic books. And it had quite a strong indie presence there, actually. So I. Um, it's not really a point. <laughs> uh, what was your first experience what was, at the convention? What was your experience like there, going to your first con? Uh, the first experience was amazing. I really loved it. Uh, it was just full of people and exciting things. It was full of comics. Um, and I really, I really enjoyed seeing people doing that, like their little comics. And that's yeah. where I fa um, discovered the concept of ash cans, which is, you know, eight and a half by 11, just folded in half. And, you know, we have a little book. So that's, uh, we started with, I tried doing that when I got back home with my own comics. Uh, and I read, what? No, I didn't read. <laughs> Uh, did I buy any stuff there? I can't remember. But it was was it overwhelming? And did you were you just amazed that this existed for anime culture, or did you kind well, of expect? It wasn't an anime con. Oh, well, uh, that's was, right. It was uh, the the hobby star ones are cross. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was a um, sci-fi and comic as well, right? Yeah, and I did I did not speak very good English then, so to me it was just you know it all looked like popular media, like a mix. You know this jumble of images and things. Um, I did. I do remember seeing, wh whenever I saw like little bits and pieces of anime, which is what I was heavily into that at the time. Um, like for example, I saw the table for the magazine Protoculture. Right. Yeah. yeah and I I saw that they were French, so I tried to impress them with my French skills, and I said, <laughs> you know, merci, <laughs> beaucoup, or something, and then. Um, the, I believe the voice actresses for Sailor Moon were there as well, mm -hmm. so we sort of snuck in to look at their performance, and I, I seem to recall that it must have been someone, I think it may have been Joe Quesada, uh, doing a panel, uh -huh. and I showed him my portfolio, if it was him, I'm not entirely sure because I, I didn't know their names. Um, but it was uh, some some big person from one of the big two. Uh, now your your first guest experience. Uh, tell me about that. My first guest experience was at Bakuretsu Con, uh, and it was it was really good. I, I thank you, Steve. I, it was it was an excellent experience, like an, an excellent first guest experience. Were you surprised to be invited as a guest? Yes, I was. Yeah. I was very surprised to be invited as a guest. Uh, and I kept on being surprised to be invited as a guest later on. But, you know, it was, it, it was good. And, uh, so, you've uh, written and illustrated DramaCon. And uh, so what made you decide to set that in a convention? Oh, uh, the reason I said that at the convention is because con scenes are so full of potential drama and it's just basically you drop a character in there and stories happen with a capital H. It's, it's, not, it's not something that I would, I would have to force, I felt. Uh, are there any aspects of the of conventions that you wanted to explore in there? Um, what really... Uh, caught my interest about conventions is the fact that they're so impermanent and the chance meetings that happen there and I mean you meet people and then you go your separate ways uh, and these connections that people form like how do they live on or do they after that mm. uh, so that was something that I wanted to explore in the book. Now when you go to conventions you, you usually run a, a few panels uh, when people go to those panels, what are some good questions that they, they should ask? What questions do you like to get, uh, to get asked? I like to get asked questions that show that they've uh, researched and had 
because there's quite a few interviews uh, with me floating around and they're mo they are mostly the same questions um, so I, I like it when people look those up before they you know ask me things and uh, are there any questions that you, you dread getting in, in your panels not like really. oh it's this question again oh. yeah no not really I mean there's there's a few recurring questions uh, like, you know, how did you come up with DramaCon? I, I know the answer by heart, so I just like... Da, 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 da. Yeah. Eh, this is how I came up with DramaCon. Um, but, I like, aren't not many that I dread getting. Uh, I really like getting the question of, so are you leader? Because then I get to explain that, no, I'm not. And I'm not Christy either, despite what this cosplay might suggest. <laughs> Now, uh, you've been to a number of conventions yourself, but do you have any funny stories or strange experiences that have happened to you at a convention? I do have a funny story. Uh, the, I went to KomoriCon in September, mm -hmm. and there was a sexy Jew cosplay, which was <laughs> rather epic. Um, basically, I was running a panel, mm -hmm. and uh, we were just about to wrap it up, and um, I said, okay, I'll take one last question. So there was this girl sitting in the front row and I said, okay, well, she raised her hand, so I, I, I said, what's your question? Uh, instead of asking her question, she got up and she opened her coat and she said, thank you, you've been a wonderful audience, and she dashed away. <laughs> so, you know, she had the sexy Joe cosplay on, so oh. the pink bodysuit with the, with the paper. Oh. And there was this just silence as she exited dashing out the door and then a round of applause like everybody started applauding um, so that, that was that was brilliant um, and then she came up later at the sign so now, is, is there any places that you would like to be invited to a convention places you'd like to visit areas of the, of, uh, the US or Canada that you'd like to see and hope a convention will take you there um, I no longer hope that the convention will take me to a place because so far conventions, um, you know, I fly in, I work, and I fly out. Um, you know, sometimes there's dinners and, but usually, concept are really run ragged, so the trips are not they're not sightseeing trips. Right. Um, they're work trips. Uh, so I don't, I no longer have the illusion of ooh I'm going to you know. Maryland or whatever, and I get to spend a couple of days just seeing the sights. Uh, that that never happens. So the secret desire to be a guest at a convention in Hawaii or Vegas or. No, I know the truth of those. <laughs> Again, you know, you get to see it out of the hotel window a little uh, bit of it, and that's it. Now, it's kind of painful. <laughs> now you're currently working on night school. Uh, for those who haven't read it, how would you describe it? Uh, Night School is a kind of story that I've been dying to write and draw since since I was in high school. Uh, it's an urban fantasy. It's basically about you know kick butt witch girls uh, going to high school and dealing with all kinds of magical problems that they need to deal with. You know, there's vampires, were werewolves, all sorts of night things. Uh, it is different from the other stories. <laughs> Uh, the villain stories on the on the same topic. Um, I tried to come up with my own uh, version of a witch. Mm -hmm. uh, so my witches are called Weirns, and they they are born with uh, guardian demon spirits tied tied to them, called astrals. Uh, and those are basically your guardian demon spirits that would die for you. Uh, how would I describe it? I guess urban fantasy. It's probably can be loosely described as, you know, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which I'm a fan of, uh, can uh, cross with Harry Potter, but the darker parts of it. Uh, so, you know, it's a magic school, but there's hunters who are hunting night things. <clears throat> um, basically, it's just, I, I took everything I loved about the genre and I'm playing with it in my own way, my own characters. And it, it, I make fun of it in my own way. <laughs> and it's set in New York City. What made you decide to choose New York? I chose New York because I fell in love with it. I don't usually like big cities, and I, I fell in love with New York because it's, it's such an incredible city. And you know, now that my story is set in there, I can do research trip and write them off taxes because <laughs> they're research trips. And, uh, so how many volumes will be in 
night school. Is it three like Dramacon, or is it, are there going to be additional ones? Uh, four, uh, for night school, four volumes are planned so far, mm -hmm. and then I guess we'll see. Uh, the first arc is four volumes. It will the first arc will end at volume four. So there may be more night school after that. Uh, I hope so. Like we'll see. We'll see how the series does. Yeah. What about after night school? Any plans? Any ideas for the future? I would really like to finish my other comics, <laughs> the ones that I started before DramaCon yeah. in night school. Are they lonely? <laughs> yes, they are. And people like people read them, and then they write me and saying, "Oh, I can't wait for you to post the next page." <laughs> Oh, I guess in a couple of years <laughs> it's coming. Um, I will actually be restarting Chasing Rainbows. Oh, sorry, resuming Chasing Rainbows um, at some point uh, this year. Great. And uh, thank you very much for taking the time to answer my silly questions. Yeah. Shiva from our podcast wanted me to ask one last one. Okay. Do you play tennis? No, I okay. tried to. <laughs> Why? Svetlana Chimakova. Oh, sounds like you should play tennis. There we go. So thank you very much.